Welcome back. Recently, we classified triangles by their sides and by their angles, and we talked about different types of triangles. Now let's take a look at angle-side relationships within a triangle. One thing we've done in the past or earlier this semester is we viewed the angles of a triangle as a hinge. And we talked about, you know, the, the wider an angle opens, okay, if we have a big angle, well, we need a, a really long side opposite that to kind of accept that, that wider angle. Whereas if we have like a real small acute angle, if we have a smaller angle, well, we don't need as big of a side across from that particular angle. So we look at, at angles as a hinge, okay? The wider the angle, the longer the side that we need, okay? If the angle's smaller, well, we don't need as wide of a, of a side there. Okay, so look at that as a hinge. So we can, if we want to draw just any old triangle, okay, and let's say we have a large angle. Well, the side opposite that large angle, large relative to the other angles of the triangle, we're going to have a, a longer side. In fact, if it's the largest angle, it'll be the longest side. Whereas if we have the smallest angle, the side opposite the smallest angle will have the smallest side. And of course, if we have then a medium angle, the side opposite that will be the medium side. So, large angle, we go opposite that, largest side. Smallest angle, the side opposite, small side. And it works in a, the other way as well. If we have the small side, then we go to the, the smallest angle and so forth. So the converse here is true. So we have a theorem that says if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Well, that makes sense. That holds with our large side, large angle. Now, if we have, say, a large side, well, that's going to be a large or a large angle, then we're going to have a large side. But now, if we have congruent angles, say these are both equal, that means the side opposite, those equal angles, will be congruent. This works only if we're working within the same triangle. So we have a theorem that says if two angles are congruent, here we've got these two base angles are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. And we will be able to do this in proof. If the base angles are congruent, that implies then the sides are congruent. But again, I can't stress enough that this works only if we're working within the same triangle. Congruent angles within different triangles do not necessarily imply those sides are congruent. Okay, here's a diagram that we'll see quite a bit. We'll see something like this. So I might say, you know, angle B is congruent to angle C. And what guys are going to want to do is they're going to want to say, well, if B is congruent to C, then I know this side is congruent to that side. That AX is congruent to AY. And that is not true. Because... AY and AX are not within the same triangle. Now, keep in mind, I'm working with just the triangle here on the left and the triangle here on the right. So this angle B is in triangle ABX, and this triangle C is in angle ACY. 
So we're not working within the same triangle here. Okay, we'd have to go all the way across. So again, the same diagram, we have these base angles are, are congruent. That would imply that this far side is congruent to that far side. So we have to go all the way across and work within the same triangle. In this case, it's the biggest triangle, the big one. Well, in this case, the converse is true. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent, which means that side is, that angle is congruent to that one. And we would say, if sides, then angles. And you might see here that, well, if we've got at least two congruent sides, these are isosceles triangles. So, yes, we are working with this isosceles triangles. And what we also see here is that if we have an isosceles triangle, if we have an isosceles triangle, if the sides are congruent, guess what? The base angles must be congruent. So the base angles of an isosceles triangle are also congruent. So let's take a look at a sample proof. We're given that angle E is congruent to angle H. So we've got that diagram I've showed you. So E is congruent to H. And we're given that EF is congruent to GH. And we want to prove that DF is congruent to DG. So hopefully you're not going to use if angles then sides because DF and DG are not in the same triangle as angle E and HR. Okay, we can't just say, oh, DG is congruent to DF by if angles then sides. That's not going to work. This triangle on the left is different from that triangle on the right. Hopefully you see that you, if you prove the two triangles congruent, then we can use CPCTC. So let's take a look. Let's look at our whole big triangle, D, E, H. Well, those base angles are congruent. So we can go all the way across and say DE is congruent to DH. Wow, that's really messy. But we can do it because of this. Step one, our given angle E is congruent to H. We are allowed to say segment DE is congruent to segment DH. And our reason is... If our base angles are congruent, then the sides are congruent. So maybe if I do some erasing here, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. So if angle E is congruent to angle H, that means DH is congruent to DE by if angles, then sides. So now, I've got that business. So it looks like my triangles are congruent by side angle side. So triangle DEF is congruent to triangle DHG by side angle side. And that's steps one, two, and three. That's convenient. And then DF is now congruent to DG by the near and dear to our hearts, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, so CPCTC. Sample 2, get you started on sample 2. This is a little more challenging. You'll see this on... Uh, 
some of the assessments you get. You'll see this in classwork possibly. But here's a problem where we're not going to give you the diagram. We're not going to give you the given and the prove in a traditional format. Okay, I'm going to ask you to determine the givens, the prove, the diagram, and then complete the following proof. Okay, so we're given that the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is also the median to the base. So I may want, I may put this. Prove that the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is also the median to the base. Well, it sounds like we're trying to prove that something is the median. We're trying to prove a median. So let's draw, and we've got an isosceles triangle, and we have a bisector of the vertex angle. So this is going to be one of those situations where you get to choose your own letters Okay, so um, let's just say triangle ABC. So A will be our vertex angle. That's going to be important, and we know this is isosceles. So we're given that triangle ABC is isosceles. And you also have to let your reader know what the base is. Here, so we're going to do base BC, or vertex angle A is our vertex angle. If you don't include that, that's we won't know what the congruent sides and what the congruent angles are because we won't know the base. So it's an isosceles triangle, and we must have a bisector of the vertex angle. We're given something as a bisector of the vertex angle. So let's say AX bisects angle BAC, because we're given that. So AX bisects angle, we can't say angle A, but angle BAC, or our vertex angle. So the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is also the median to the base. So it looks like we're trying to prove that AX is a median. All right, so I think we got it. Triangle ABC is isosceles. AX bisects angle BAC. And we want to prove AX is a median. Well, how will we know if AX is a median? Well, if we know our vocabulary, we know that medians create congruent segments. So if we can get BX congruent to XC, then AX is going to be a median. So BX congruent to XC is going to be our second last step. So if this is consistent with what we've done in the past, we'll probably have to prove these two triangles congruent, then use CPCTC to get those segments congruent, then we'll have a median. So once again, I'm working from the bottom of my proof. I'm going backwards saying, you know, if I'm going to have this, I'm going to have to have something, I'm going to have to have something, and we'll meet in the middle. So I will go ahead and start you from the bottom. So our last step will be that AX is a median. That's going to be the eighth step. The seventh step, we'll know it's a median if we can get XB we can get XB congruent to XC. And that's probably going to be CPCTC because we said we're going to try and get the triangles congruent. So we want to get triangle ABX congruent to triangle ACX. So I've got you started. So I've just turned this problem into uh, proving triangles congruent. I'm going to ask you to fill out the rest of the statements and the reasons and finish off that proof. And we'll go through that when I see you in class.